Hello everyone, it's Dolphin Oracle back again today here on my new to me ThinkPad. Uh, if you recall, I set up a couple of videos ago. It's a ThinkPad T530. And in my video that I'm going to throw a little link up here in the thing for it, you'll recall that I said I was setting my system up as a legacy boot uh, because that's how the Windows was installed on it. Everything went fine. We went through the entire video series, didn't have a problem. MX was booting in legacy mode just fine. Um, however, I was wrong. The laptop was actually set up for Windows to boot from a UEFI uh, scenario. Um, and it couldn't boot from legacy. When I switched to a legacy only mode on my computer, boom, it was that was the end of the world. I couldn't chain load into the into the Windows from Grub. It was just a disaster. So I went through, I did a lot of research on rebuilding some jibber-jabber called the Windows BCD, I don't know, boot manager for Windows. It just wasn't working. And I eventually found out, well, I'm going to switch this thing over to UEFI. And I switched over to UEFI. And boom, the Windows came back. Of course, MX was done because I had installed it in legacy mode. So I went through the whole setup routine all over again uh, to get everything back in the UEFI mode. Long story short. Now, let me show you what I learned about the BIOS on at least two of my computers, or the UEFI setup. I don't, what the heck do you call the thing? The system setup utility. This is the default setup, boot setup on my ThinkPad. Now, forgive the image quality. I took it with my camera. But you can see that in UEFI legacy boot, the boot mode was both. This is the default, okay? And then UEFI Legacy Boot Priority Legacy First. Now this is part of what led me down the path that you, Windows was in a legacy mode, boot mode. And this is also what led my MX stick to boot in legacy boot mode, which gives me all the little F10 menus at the bottom of the boot screen. The, the, the USB stick doesn't care. It only matters when you actually do the install. So on UEFI Legacy Boot Mode, this thing was set to boot both in legacy first, and this is the guy right here. CSM support. CSM support is a little module that even if your system is set up to boot UEFI, removable heart media will still be able to boot legacy. Even if I change this to UEFI only, this, this thing right here would still have the M MX stick boot Potentially, it doesn't always happen this way. It depends on the computer. But on this computer, if that was enabled, the UE, the uh, the system would boot in the legacy boot mode instead of UFI, which of course confused the heck out of the installer because it installs the legacy boot loader instead of the UEFI boot loader. If all that sounds like gobbledygook, so I got the wrong mode. And this CSM support, this compatibility module, which is supposed to make life easier for people, uh, made my life hard for this. So uh, I changed it, and we go to the next image. I changed it on my computer to UEFI Legacy Boot, UEFI only. Now, interestingly enough, I actually left this enabled as it was with yes, but now that my system only boots in UEFI mode, the MX stick actually shows up in um, as a, a, a properly with the UEFI stick. Setting it to both confuses the issue. Setting it to one or the other is is much easier to deal with uh keeping things straight okay uh let's see so this was one computer this is the thinkpad so i decided to take a look at another machine now i've i have a i have a little lenovo s21e netbook um it's 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 okay uh it really likes running annex now i run mx on the thinkpad but on the little guy i run annex and so this is the BIOS or the setup utility on the on the S21e. Now you see it came with legacy support. Now you see this the, the setup utility is a little different, right? So it says legacy support. That's basically both. Okay, legacy support you uh, you need that for if you're going to use an OS that needs legacy support. Yes, and it's boot priority legacy first, but the Windows that's installed on this machine is UEFI. So I really, if I want to dual boot, which I do, I got to have everything the same. Uh, you see, it doesn't say anything about a CSM module. So the chain, the settings 
in your utility are going to vary depending on the system. This in sync, I don't know if you can tell it, this in sync H2O setup utility, this actually shows up on some Dell computers too. So you're, if you have a Dell, this may show up the same way. I haven't tried HPs. Uh, my only HP was legacy only. And I've got a gigabyte motherboard that looks nothing like this. Okay, it has a fancy schmancy, you know, like crazy graphical mouse driven point and click UFI setup program. It's it doesn't it doesn't look like this, confusing the issues. So at any rate, so I changed it on that system to boot mode UEFI. Easy peasy, done. It doesn't confuse the installer. Uh, the MX installer or the Anik installer, which are in this regard exactly the same. So there you go. A little bit of the story uh, from 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 my install videos, maybe a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, if you run into trouble with legacy versus UEFI, these are the kinds of settings to look for. So hopefully this helps some of you uh, have a problem. Again, it's not, I hesitate to say it's our installer because if you boot legacy, we can't install UEFI. It just doesn't work. Uh, the util this grub setup utility, the bootloader setup utility, uh, needs to boot from a UEFI environment to know that you want to install to a UEFI environment. So make sure you have your environment set up the way you want it first. I would say that goes for a lot of other distros too. I don't know. I've, I've only I've only other installed Manjaro or Manjaro. I don't know how you say it. Whatever. It looks kind of Spanish to me. So Manjaro. Um, uh, on, a, on a UEFI machine. Uh, it, it went fine. But it was UEFI only. I didn't, I didn't have any of this legacy compatibility mode junk then. Now, someone asked me the other day, well, why do you like to use UFI setups? Well, number one, because it's really easy if you, for dual booting if you need to you know, reinstall Windows or do whatever because it, it doesn't mess with the master boot record on the hard drive. It, it has a separate whole partition full of these little stub files, they call them, that boot the rest of the operating system. It's brilliant, and if, you're, if your grub fails, you can actually use your system setup utility uh, Let's see if I have a picture of it. I bet I don't. Trust me, you can use this setup utility here to get you to the file. You just change the bootloader. If you want to go back to the Windows bootloader, you just set the Windows bootloader to be the one that loads. It's it's really, really simple. Here, I have it on I have it on this on this H2 setup utility. It says EFI section, it has Annex 16, MX15, which actually isn't even installed on that machine anymore, but it's left over because the file doesn't overwrite. If I'd selected that, it wouldn't go anywhere. It wouldn't do anything. Um but MX 16 is the default. It's listed first. But the Windows Boot Manager is still there. I could change the system to go back to booting the Windows Boot Manager without needing to go test this, without having to rebuild the MBR, without having to do any of the crud we had to do back when it, you know everything wanted the right you know six lines of code to the master boot record. Okay, this is this is much easier. It's much cleaner. It's it gives me multiple ways to dual boot. Uh, if I need, if need be, and if I happen to remove a system or delete a partition, this still works. It still works. So anyway, that's one reason I use UFI on all my systems. I've converted everything over to it. I've only got one legacy computer left. It's an old uh, EPC, EEPC, the little netbooks, the original netbooks. You know, the little little nine inch guys, are real real tiny. It's thirty two bit only. It's running an old version of Annex six fifteen right now, and set up to be as used as a particular media player. Um, so. Uh, I'm still using it. I just don't. That's the only machine I have left that doesn't. I haven't switched over UEFI. Now, one other reason that's kind of cool. This is the Grub uh, menu from the ThinkPad. You'll notice it says System Setup right here. Yeah, that's this screen. You let you get to the System Setup from the Grub menu rather than have to jam around on an F12 key or whatever, delete or escape or whatever the key happens to be on your particular system of the day. Um, you know, I just I just go to the menu and hit the button. It's great. Anyway, any rate, short video today. I hope you found some information useful. Uh, I have a th I'll have a thread for it in the uh, video section over at MX. And if you have any questions, drop a line. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.